Male Arthur. Her blouse lay atop her bosom as they popped up like meerkats. One after the other, her long hair kissed the top of her butt <laughs> that was like two buttery Rioche rolls ready for dinner. Ha ha. <laughs> her toner bread lips called to me. Caress me. They said, <laughs> Police sketch artist, Sir! <laughs> Sir! <laughs> <laughs> Tonight at 10, men! What are they? Who are they? And should they be writing women? To answer these, in short, we still don't know. They could be anyone, anywhere, at any time. And no! No! <laughs> and that's what we're looking at today. Men writing women, who should have definitely stopped short before doing that. All right, let's get started. Uh, <laughs> stupid. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted an excuse to use my green screen again. What of it? I saw an opportunity and I took it, okay? <laughs> Oh, also, the campaign for these little guys starts in like three days on the 18th, so get ready. <laughs> no, Craig, I want a big, dumb, fake answer. Noelle rolls her eyes. I think her breasts roll in sync with them. Girls' breasts are so amazing. <laughs> this whole book has both my eyes and my boobs rolling. <laughs> 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 Hello, fellas. 1940s detective here. It was a hot night in the city of angels when a leggy blonde walked into my office. She had 13, maybe 14 legs. Way too many. I admire a girl who knows how to sashay, he told himself. <laughs> Watching the fascinating interplay of her left buttock with her right, they put him in the mind of two puppies in a pillowcase. It's a lost art in our crass cavailing age it is puppies <laughs> i've i've heard of sweater puppies i've never heard of butt puppies <laughs> What? I find romance written by men to be more realistic. They always remember to give boobs conscious thoughts. Angry boobs. Hungry boobs. I myself am guilty of forgetting to include this in my books and am working to improve. <laughs> Hungry, hungry boobs. <laughs> you know, as an erotica editor, I've read many euphemisms for female genitalia over the years, but somehow I've managed to go nearly a decade without ever once reading the phrase, her throbbing jazz cafe. Until now. What the fudge does that mean? Throbbing jazz cafe. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I know when you're writing, you're supposed to leave a little bit to the interpretation of the reader, but this leaves! What could it possibly mean? <laughs> Female character. Are you saying that because I'm a woman? Well, let me tell you, Mr. Penis Haver. Us women can be just as strong and ruthless as you, sir. Male screenwriter. <gasps> Ooh, yes, this is gold. <laughs> I think this is what my girlfriend says to other women in the washroom. Am I right, fellas? That must be what they're saying. <laughs> Mr. P. <laughs> you know the memes have been going around on Twitter lately where it's like Little Miss Sunshine. <laughs> Little Mr. Penis ever. <laughs> 23 easy, but not creepy. Ways women are making extra cash. 23 easy, but not creepy. Ways women are making extra cash. I'm starting to think that these easy ways of making cash might be a bit creepy. Hmm. <laughs> Narrator. They were, in fact, creepy. <laughs> you just made me choke on my face. <laughs> Having fun. Cindy asked, taking a sexy bite out of her hot dog. Ooh. Arr. <laughs> <laughs> Christopher Pike, no way. I really liked reading Christopher Pike books when I was growing up. Her breast jiggled neurodivergently. Several other questions assailed him, but his mother had approached, followed by the waddling bulk of her eunuch. She moved with the willowy grace of a 15-year-old virgin. Ah! Despite her 60 whoa, years. 
That's your mother! No! <laughs> Hello! I am the protagonist of a psychological thriller. My name is Girl McWife. I have never asked the man I married a single question in all these years I have known him. <gasps> He's so mysterious. How could I have not known? <laughs> He's a murderer who escaped our local asylum? <gasps> this mysterious box in our attic? Well, it's full of pictures of a man who looks like my husband. But it can't be him because it's showing him in prison and he's never been to prison has he oh no <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have that idea for free. How about that? <laughs> I bet in the comments of this video, we could really, we could really write, this is your homework for today's video. Go into the comments and while this video is playing, I want you to write your own man writing a woman. <laughs> Bonus points if it's a woman writing a man. After this video goes live, I'm going to be scrolling down there for hours. I might even read them out in a video. How about that? Wow. What if Lady Parts was one big eye socket without an eye? But when women have adult fun time, they take the eye out right before you go in, but never show you it because they know you're going to freak out. Creative. Stop. <laughs> Once a comic writer sent me a script idea and all the female characters were listed with only their eye color and their cup size. I'm personally of the mindset that I don't care what your cup size is. All cups are good cups. The Independent. Bad Sex Award is idiotic, says angry author nominated for scene where food critic sucks Brie off. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> that headline was a wild adventure from start to finish. You are not wrong. <laughs> Secrets of Hannah's mom and the Dutch tulip guy. I looked down my blouse at my chest. Keep your sh together. I whispered to my lungs. <laughs> All right, that's... That's not too bad. I like that. <laughs> she femaled femininely across the room. Her breasts breasting breastily. Her jeans were tighter than my butt. Hole. Oh! Um, which Ed Sheeran song is this? Male Arthur. Her name was Glacinda. She was 14. No. Arthur. But had the body of a grown woman. No. Soft, perky boobs atop a delicate no, frame. No, 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 Flips no, no, ahead no, four no, pages. No, no, like pepperonis, those boobs were. Bah! Oh, God. Ah! No. Too real, Sorrow. <laughs> Too real. <laughs> By the way, while men tend to prefer women with long hair, ever see a painting of Eve with a buzz cut? Women, especially as they age, seem to prefer wearing shorter hair. After all, long hair on a mature, sophisticated woman can seem about as appropriate as shoveling soup with your fingers. Wow. <laughs> Women, you better cut your hair as you age or else I'm going to think of soupy fingers. <laughs> Hello, male writer. Do you want to play a game? Before you is a typewriter. You have one day to write a novella with a woman as the protagonist without describing her breasts. Her butt was like a peach. And brother, I'm in her pit. Oh, uh, well, that one's on me. <laughs> Um, I have an honest question as I'm trying to write a book for myself. How can I describe the physique of a female character in a way that forms a picture without landing on a list like this? I mean, mentioning the chest is unavoidable or... Uh, just bite the bullet. You're going to be on this list. <laughs> she reaches down seductively. I guide her hand to my zipper. She unzips my fanny pack by mistake. Ravioli spill out everywhere. <gasps> no, my ravioli. <laughs> oh, I was having them in there for safekeeping. <laughs> I'm not like other girls. She said, golden skin shimmering in the summer sun. And she wasn't. She was a rotation rotisserie chicken that I bought, took outside and performed a small skit with in the parking lot before eating in my car while sobbing loudly. Uh, oh, hello there. That's a top-notch bird you've got there. <laughs> Said the passerby as I waved him a teary thank you. <laughs> he became aroused, stiff as a block of vegan cheese, freshly cracked out of the packet. She organismed. Her body stiffened further, much like the same block of vegan cheese after several hours at high temperature under the direction of a novice trying to melt it. What does it mean? 
His kiss was slow, but firm and unyielding, like an old man backing his Lincoln Town car over a handicapped parking sign. Me! Oh, oops! I almost drank my paint water, Lamau. The pretentious man writing my life. This is what drove him crazy about her. Her wildness. Her insanity. One moment, she was peaceful. The artist in her nest. The next, she dived into chaos. Dined on it. Challenged it. Just when he thought he understood her, she moved to again rewrite her definition. Always unknowable. Always glittering like the ocean. Hinting at a story yet untold. Laughing at a joke not meant for him, her eyes twinkling with secrets and humor and otherworldly feminine, fem, feminine, feminine. She was surrounded by color, loved it so much. She tried to pour it inside of her, tried to poison herself with it, tried to paint even her organs. He wanted to kiss her, to entangle that art into his own skin, but the moment was past. She was again order, peace, the chaos ceased. He didn't even get to touch her boobies <laughs> if nothing else he did write a bit of a surprise ending cleopatra i commanded an army against my brother historians cleopatra was sexy <laughs> egypt was stable and prosperous under my rule so sexy <laughs> i spoke nine languages s-e-x-y <laughs> New York Times asks, how should a man write about a woman? The answer, I think, is listen and observe, observe, observe. Then, no, you still won't get it more than half right on your best day. At least, <laughs> at least Stephen King admits it, because his writing sometimes is horrifying. And not like in a spooky book way, but in a like, he should have stopped way. <laughs> you ever read it? I did. Never again. <laughs> now half London's to have horror rained upon it. All because of my ridiculous female naivete. You were no more naive than I. We're just lucky that Nemo was ingenious enough to work things out. <laughs> this has got to be a League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. <laughs> is it? I think it is. Sheesh. <laughs> In my case, it happened to be a fact. Few young men know the Oedipal torment of growing up with an insanely hot, perpetually single mom. That's your mother. You know when a cat gets on the furniture and you got a little spritzer bottle and you're just like, Psst, no. <laughs> You need a bit of that. <laughs> How many times will I have to read? Breasts described like they're caffeinated Yorkshire terriers. Perky, hand-sized, straining to be free. See what I mean? Yeah, sweater puppies. I was talking about that earlier. <laughs> the Jazz Cafe Yorkshire Terrier crossover. <laughs> her name was Scarlet Pakistan. Her brown eyes were as brown as the brownest crayon. A good place. <laughs> Season one was a lot of fun. I really like that show. Have you cupped every size of breast in your hands? I legitimately think that I have. From the tiniest sparkling pebble to the most fertile giant warm pillows, I have traversed the tapestry of the lush land of bosom. Source. Trust me, bro. <laughs> uh, it made us imagine the worst about each other. That's why you thought you saw me with that other girl. It's what Doom wanted you to think. It was Doom's way of toying with us, of setting us up for the kill. Reed, dearest, I've been such a fool. Not a fool, Sue. Merely a female. You couldn't have reacted differently. But we haven't time to talk. How <laughs> would Dr. Doom on the loose? <laughs> oh, his, 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 his eyes caught me off guard. That's... <laughs> Shirley met them breathlessly in the outer office. Welcome back, Mr. Quail. She fluttered her melon-shaped boobies. Today painted an incandescent orange, bobbing with agitation. <laughs> uh, oh, these are the angry boobs we heard about. I remember. <laughs> Hello, fellas. Have you ever wondered about the origin of the development of a suffragette? At 15, a little pet. At 20, a little coquette. At 40, <gasps> not yet married. At 50, a suffragette. You see, fellas, because without a man, a woman just... That, I guess. Wow. Ah! Boob! <laughs>
<laughs> the universal sound effect for a boob getting boob punched. Boob. <laughs> is Lola Bunny a tomboy? Lola Bunny is a cartoon character from Warner Bros. Studios. She is a very attractive, unbearably beautiful, and insanely attractive female tomboy anth anthropomorphic rabbit. Whoa, hey pal, let's back it up a bit. Looks as though I'll just be going along for the ride. I'm not sure how I can help. Arr, rumpf, Miss Storm, a pretty young lady can always be of help just by keeping the men's morale up. That's just the way we feel about Sue, General. They made a movie about this comic. They made a series of movies. This is my spy character. She's a woman who uses adult fun time in her slinky feminine wiles to triumph over her male adversaries. She learned from years of bad things when she was an innocent lamb. Her name is Red Dress Russian Thought, and she's written by me, Greg Bradman Person. Groundbreaking. <laughs> What even is this video? <laughs> Conquered by Clippy, an erotic short story. Shut the front door. <laughs> Conquered by Clippy, an erotic. Stop. It looks like you're trying to buy a book. Shut up. <laughs> it has a four out of five rating with 45 ratings. Don't make me read this. <laughs> Rand wrinkled her nose in almost a flirtatious way. <laughs> Did I do it? <laughs> Am I flirting now? <laughs> I pressed the bell and a cheerful voice said it was on its way. The voice belonged to a plump, round-faced woman of the sort that develops a good personality because the alternative is game over. Things women in literature have died from. Cold hands, beautiful face, missing slippers, wrist fevers, night brain, <laughs> going outside at night in Italy, shawl insufficiency, too many pillows, garden troubles. Someone said no very loudly while they were in the room. <gasps> Letter reading fits, drawing room anguish, not enough pillows, haven't seen the sea in a long time. Oh, <laughs> too many novels, pony exhaustion, strolling congestion, sherry served too cold, ship infidelity, spent more than a month in London after growing up in Yorkshire, clergyman's dropsy, uh, uh, flirting headaches, <laughs> hate it when that happens, river unhappiness, general, general bummers, <laughs> shut up, is that real, I mean it's not, but it like, <laughs> Knitting needles too heavy. Mm, beautiful chestnut hair. Spinal degradation as a result of pride. Parents too happy. The unpleasantness. I must read every single one of these novels. I am so excited. No, we're superheroes. We tackle crime and save people's lives. The only thing changing is uh, that is a but. He's wrong his <laughs> time, Tigra. Trust me. I know it's probably fine to show, but like I don't trust YouTube not to demonetize me because a third of this horizontal panel is devoted to a butt. Female character cuts her own hair in a dirty mirror with a hunting knife. Her hair in the next scene. Every time, although, you're not coming after people with that hairstyle, are you? <laughs> Love triangles can't exist without at least one LGBT person. Cisheads just don't know how shapes work. See this? Not a triangle. This is a triangle. I've created this helpful infographic. Most of the characters that people call a love triangle is really just a love corner. And the woman is usually backed into it. Oh God. Reblogging for the last comment. Oh geez. She was a woman, and as such, she was primarily concerned with two things. How she looked, and how she could please a man. She was aware of her own attractiveness, and knew that her looks could get her what she wanted from a man. She was also aware of her own adult fun time power, and knew that she could use it to manipulate a man into doing what she wanted. She was confident and self-assured, and knew that she could get what she wanted from a man if she played her cards right. Oh, asked a text AI, link in the comments, to write a woman written by a man. That makes a lot more sense. <laughs> it was so accurate. It just repeated a little bit in the end and I was like, uh, 
<laughs> but, oh my god, that says a lot. That the only thing that tipped me off was that it was a little bit repetitive. Indistinguishable. Terry Pratchett's amazing description and going postal. Oh, I like that book. What is going on here? Said a voice full of offended ownership. Moist turned. I think, I think that's the clay golem in this book, if I remember correctly. But that's their name, so. <laughs> if one of the rules that should be passed on to a young man is don't get mixed up with crazy girls who smoke like a bellows. Another one should be run away from any woman who pronounces what with two H's. This woman might have been two women. She certainly had the cubic capacity and since she was dressed entirely in white, looked rather like an iceberg, but chillier. And with sails and with a headdress starched to a cutting edge. Two smaller women stood behind and on either side of her, in definite danger of being crushed if she stepped backwards. Did you know that when Terry Pratchett was going to be knighted by the queen, that he decided he would forge his own sword? So he he went out and he got meteorite metal and decided, yep, I'm going to learn how to forge a sword. Absolutely incredible human. Men, they were able to conjure it up immediately. That was one of their powers. That thunderous splashing as they stood lordly over the bowl. Everything about them was more direct. Their insides weren't the maze women's were for the pee to find its way through. True. Ever since I transitioned into a biological woman, I've lost my pee powers, which enabled thunderous splashes as I stood lordly over the bowl. Now I sit, waiting for the pee to make its way through a confusing feminine labyrinth, thus causing my brain to be tired. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Me, writing about men the way bad male authors write about women. He charged into the room, hurt, testicles bouncing gaily. I saw a scar and wondered if he'd had a vasectomy. He opened his plump lips, full of promise, but annoying words came out. Something about a football match. Oh my gosh. Okay, as I go to the comments now, I want to see what all of you have written for your short stories for men writing women. Or, bonus points, women writing men. <laughs> I had so much fun in today's video. Thank you everybody for sticking it out as long as you have. I really appreciate you being here. And thanks for just generally being like the best community we could ever possibly find. I love spending hours going into my comment section and reading what all of you say because all of you are so gosh dang wholesome and you care about each other and so many of you start threads where you're talking to each other. I love that. All right, my beardos and weirdos. We'll see you in the next one where we take it one topic at a time. Roll that out. <laughs> All right, get out of here. Boom! <laughs>